get all serious. What about DJ Am? Um, Being that he just passed. Because honestly, for me, I just feel really bad for all of his friends and his family and obviously him because he's not here. But the whole drug thing, what's your take on that? And then I'll tell you mine. Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I think with DJ AM, it's sad and it's unfortunate that, you know, this happened to him and I can't even understand what Travis is feeling, what Adam's family is feeling, what anyone's feeling, you know, the fans. Um, you know, but what people fail to realize when it comes to addiction or relapsing, it's a very serious, serious condition. And unless you've been there or have had depression or anything like that, um, no one can ever speak on someone's choices and the things they do. Because unless you've been to the lowest point in your life or you feel like you've been so depressed or you can't overcome things. For some people, okay look, some people have an addictive personality and right. some people don't. For instance, for me, um, I'm at a point in my life where I just recently made a decision with my doctor to um, finally give in to antidepressants. Okay. Now, wait, do you want this on YouTube or no? If you, this is fine. Okay. It's fine. I don't have anything to hide. There's, it's no big deal. See, um, and that's why I love her because she's one of the few people in my life that is just like me and doesn't have shit to hide. Because when you have something to hide, it's because you fear judgment from other people. When really, the only person that can judge you is yourself. But anyways, continue. <laughs> so no it's true though no, right it is true. like it is the true. only reason people keep secrets is because they're afraid of what other people are going to think or how they're going to react and so if you remove that fear and you really uh, hey i don't give a fuck what anybody thinks then you're an open book correct correct okay so and sorry that is me and i'm full of stories <laughs> whether i'm working in the office i'm at home I am in a social environment where I should be happy, where I'm at an often popping club, drinks everywhere. I could be buzzed. Well, and alcohol is a depressant, so yes. it only adds to it. Mm -hmm. It makes you momentarily feel good, maybe forget, but that's it. But you never, here's the thing though, you never can turn your brain off. Like me, I don't have an off switch. So, in I a lot of either. ways, <laughs> yeah, in a lot of ways, I become an insomniac. I can be tired as fuck, but I can't go to sleep. I'm always thinking about shit. Okay, with DJ AM, I think after, I think personally, see, I don't know him personally, but my thoughts in just all of the press and hearing everything, I think for him, I think he was okay, and I think he had everything under control. Once you're an addict, um, the battle is forever. It's lifelong. Will that open? There we go. The That's battle is lifelong. Um, I think he had everything under control and everything was going okay, but after the crash, the plane crash, right? I think maybe witnessing, you know, his peers pass away and the long healing process between him and Travis, that really took him back to that dark place. Maybe it was a physical pain, maybe it was the mental pain, maybe, you know, you never know what people go through, but... Especially celebrities, because and they're under the spotlight. With most Everything celebrities, it's house. not okay to talk about things. Yes, yes. Because they have, they have their name. label or their agent or their whoever. Their reps are speaking for them. Wait, no, you can't say that. You have, you're gonna be a robot, and you're gonna repeat exactly what we want you to say because you. And I don't know about him because he is a DJ. It's not like he's an actor or an actress. But regardless, still with celebrities. Uh, whoa. <laughs> what was that? Oh my god, what was that? Yeah, you don't you don't really know what they're going through. You don't, you know? And for me personally, I could never be a celebrity. Because if I was a celebrity, I would probably be locked up right now because I would have already punched a paparazzi in the face. Because yeah, I, you would have. <laughs> I just like my privacy. That's real, you know? And I feel like everything is just stripped from you. You have nothing left. You know, when you're in the spotlight, that, you know, that alone can 
make you a drug addict. You know, that alone can further... Having to meet everyone else's demands and like... Not your own. You know what? Actually, I want to go off topic just for a second. Do you know she, I've always said she reminds me of Pink? Singer Pink? <laughs> she doesn't look anything like her <laughs> at all. At all. What are you? Chinese and Portuguese and French. Chinese, Portuguese and French. She doesn't look at all like Pink, but the attitude is the same. And where was I going with this? Why was I going off of that? Um, oh, because you were talking about how celebrities can't, okay, because celebrities can't do whatever the fuck they want. It's the same thing, I, I think Britney Spears has talked about it. A lot of, like, Christina Aguilera, how, like, oh, well, the first record I ever put out wasn't really me. Because it's all, again, the label, it's this image, again, image, I've talked about image before, image is... Image is, is everything. Is everything. And is image really, the image that you're trying to portray, is that really who you are? And as a celebrity, it's not who you, what you're trying to portray, it's what your agent or your whatever, your label wants you to portray so that you make money for them. So, yeah. That is the way it is. And you know, I commend those that don't leap out of their seats and don't leave that red carpet to fucking lay the smack down on these motherfuckers. Because... Because you couldn't do it. Because <laughs> that would be me! You would be beating some ass. <laughs> I would. I would be pulling a fucking Justin Timberlake on them. You know, I would have done grab the camera. Been demolishing shit. That's just me. You know, I, I like my business my business. I don't feel that people should be making money off of me or anything like that. Not that people are making money off of me now, but if I were to put myself in their shoes, you know, that gets me pretty pissed Well, off. if you're gonna make money off me, you're gonna make money off of me, not who you want me to be. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that said, um, I think it's bullshit that anyone can sit there and have any negative shit to say about AM and his passing and um, yeah. He, that oh. he had a second, well here's the thing, I've heard a lot of people say that he had a second chance on life because he was in the plane crash. And so therefore he should have gotten his life together and like recognized and like whatever. And for me personally, I can kind of Oh my god, look at these fucking clouds. That's gross. This is disgusting. I don't even know if what I'm recording can be seen right now. Anyway, I've been through trials and tribulations. You have as well. Everyone knows about mine because I've put them on blast because I really don't care. But it's really easy to sit back when nothing has happened in your life and to say, Oh my god, you have a new lease on life. You're going to be fabulous now and you're just going to run with it. But it doesn't always happen that way and I've heard a lot of people say that about AM too like well after the plane crash he should have just like got like appreciated every step that he took and every breath that he took and and not wasted it on doing drugs and I'm sure these are all the fucking step from wives right from Connecticut and wherever the fuck <laughs> saying that right while they're baking their fucking cupcakes <laughs> right you know uh, I don't know I've seen a lot of different people say a lot of different things Here's my thing. How many of those people were actually addicts themselves? And can actually speak on it. How many of those people were manic depressives? How many of those people just had issues in general? Um, True. I would bet my savings that not very many. Maybe five, less than five percent. The bottom line here, I think, is that really in regards to anything in life, unless you've walked a mile in their shoes, it's very cliche, but you really can't say shit. Right? Thank you. No, right? you can't. You can't. And don't judge a book by its cover because you know what? Sally Homemaker that's living across the street from you or, you know, to the right of you next door could be snorting coke. Okay? All yeah. day, every day. I've seen it. You've and just seen because it. she's wearing a cashmere argyle sweater doesn't mean her shit doesn't stink and she doesn't fucking smoke pot okay so that maybe next time when you're smelling that ganja peeking over your fence that's sally homemaker smoking that shit whose life looks so prim and proper from the outside but on the inside her husband is just fucking 